Thomas Brown went missing on November 23rd. Search efforts have been going on, but the family has turned the investigation over to the To my knowledge, there, I wouldn't the say that there was any one particular person that he was in any problems or issues with. He pretty much got along with But everybody. we're no closer to finding Thomas on this eighth month of the his The remains of missing Canadian teen Thomas Brown have been found. Now we go look for the, for the bad guy. In, in trying to frame this as a suicide. I know 100% that our team completely not. Somebody agree. must have come up behind Tom while he was sitting in the car and shot him in the head. Says he's notifying the bar that Sheriff Lewis is being investigated by the Texas Rangers. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video, today we're joined by YouTube channel Night Ducks. Say hello. Hey Mike, really excited to be a part of this today. Been a big fan of yours for quite a while and I'm really- Very good. Uh, today we're going to look into the case of Thomas Brown. Now this is a strange one, so listen up good. Thomas Brown was 18 years old when he went missing in 2016. And when he was finally found, it led to more questions than answers. And possibly there could be something rotten in the town of Canadian. As I said, the excellent Night Docs is joining me in this video and he actually did an interview with one of the private investigators who worked on the case, so we'll look at that too. All right, let's hit the brick. Thomas Brown was born in 1998, growing up in Canadian, the great state of Texas. Canadian is a pretty small town, population under 3,000. Apparently, it's also called the Oasis of the High Plains, Likely by people who've never been there. I'm kidding, apparently it's it's lovely. Anyway, Canadians seem to be the kind of town where, you know, it's a small town, everybody knows each other's business. Thomas, he was popular, well-liked, and a successful football player, and he enjoyed drama and acting. He had been class president for two years. He lived with his mother, Penny, a teacher, and his stepfather, Chris. Thomas's brother, Tucker, was home for Thanksgiving, and the two had been enjoying spending time together. Thomas had also recently broken up with his girlfriend. So this about brings us up to Wednesday, the 23rd of November, when 18-year-old Tom Brown, he went missing. That evening, Tom met up with his friends Caleb and Christian in the middle school parking lot. They all ended up driving around town in Christian's car. Then, at about 11 p.m., Christian drove the two back to their cars in the parking lot. And Tom, he then drove to a gas station Getting there at about 11.30 p.m., he fills the L uh, truck up, and uh, that is that. He missed his 12 a.m. curfew. His mother Penny texts him about 10 minutes after. It's delivered, but not read. At 12.13 a.m., Tom's phone emits its last ping at the football stadium in Canadian. And five minutes later, Penny texts him again, but this time it's unable to be Delivered his phone, it's likely off. At 2 a.m., Penny called Tom's friends and found no sign of him. Then at 3.30 a.m., a sheriff's deputy, Pine Gregory, arrived. And you may want to remember that name for later. Deputy Gregory arrived an hour and 50 minutes after first being called in, and he and Tucker went for a spin around the area. They found nothing. Though, at one point, Tucker noticed that a normally closed and locked gate to a dirt road was open, but the deputy didn't drive down there. Tucker later asked during his ride to go back to that area, but the deputy refused, saying he had to go off shift. Something important would later be found down there. So later that morning, at about 8.40 a.m., you know, by this stage, everybody's becoming uh, pretty worried. So Tom's friend Christian and his father Luckily, they got a whirlybird. They search from the skies and they find Tom's truck four miles away from his home. It was found near sewage ponds and, according to his mother Penny, not near anywhere he would have gone. His phone, laptop, backpack and keys were all missing from the truck, although the chargers were still there. So they finally found his truck. No sign of Tom, but what they did find was scary. A blood droplet on the driver's side door, Tom's blood, an empty 25 caliber bullet casing, and a debit card belonging to Tom's friend, Michael Castletine. He wasn't out with them that night. 
Michael's mother said he lost his debit card often, and this wasn't out of the ordinary. Someone had also pissed on the ground beside the truck. That wasn't collected. Also, when the police were examining the truck, they didn't, uh, you know, wear any gloves, so... You know, not off to a great start there. Not long after the truck was found, the sheriff, name of Nathan Lewis, told Chris, Tom's stepfather, he thought Tom might have killed himself. Which was weird, with nobody. Dogs tracked his scent to the Canadian River, about a mile east, and stopped when they got to the marshy area of the river. It was later revealed that between 1.30 a.m. and 6 a.m., his vehicle was spotted on CCTV driving around town, and eventually to the area it was found. Now the search. This is when things start to get... stinky. Now they already were kind of stinky from the way Tom's truck was examined, but the case gets a whole lot worse. Speaking of the truck, that was returned to Tom's mother Penny the day it was found. You would think that the police might want to hold on to it, but they didn't. This will come up again, but by the time they just found his truck a couple of hours after he disappeared, the local law enforcement had already made up their mind on what happened. In the weeks after, a search of the area and waterways around where the truck was found, they came up nada. The search for Tom's body, it continued. Have there been any interviews done with uh, any of Thomas Brown's classmates? Was he, did he have any enemies or anything like that that were uh, causing him any trouble towards the end? Um, no, not to my knowledge. There, we, our firm um, did do several interviews with um, several friends, classmates, um, fellow football players. Everybody pretty much said the same thing, that he was a very funny guy. He was um, very nice, very outgoing. To my knowledge, there I wouldn't say that there was any one particular person that he was in any problems or issues with. Um, he pretty much got along with everybody. Sheriff Nathan Lewis would also ask Tom's mother Penny for Tom's phone, the passcode to his phone, which was weird because his phone hadn't been found yet. Also, a particularly interesting detail is that Tom's mother Penny says that she saw a photo of Tom getting gas the night he disappeared. She was shown the photo 10 days after he went missing by Sheriff Nathan Lewis, and she confirmed it was him. But what was strange about the photo was that it was a close-up, as opposed to a capture from CCTV or anything. The sheriff claimed that the photo came from Dollar General, but Penny said it didn't look like it. The photo was never released, this detail bothered me quite a bit, so I called the private investigator firm, who was very tight-lipped about this particular photo, and when I asked if they believed that if it was taken by someone connected to Thomas's death, she couldn't comment. In January 2017, Tom's backpack was found by an electrical worker four miles from the car, in an area Tom's brother Tucker would say had been searched before so it had to have been placed there after the fact. Due to its condition, it didn't lead them anywhere. Tom's mother, Penny, didn't even know it had been found for five days. Also around this time, uh, Sheriff Nathan Lewis would change his mind on what he thought happened to Tom, saying that he now thought Tom was gay and he'd run away with an older man. Which is bizarre, because they still hadn't found his body, and Tom, he also wasn't gay. So by this stage, Tom's family, sick of this shit, enlisted the help of Philip Klein of Klein Investigations, who you might remember actually were involved in the uh, Dior Kunz Jr. case. In October 2017, Klein Investigations conducted a search around Lake Marvin Road, near where Tom's backpack was found. On October 14, 2017, a gun holster was found. During this search, a cell phone was also found. Now, the phone was rose gold. Tom's phone was just gold gold. But according to the sheriff, that was Tom's. Toward the end of that year, Penny created a campaign to have the Texas Attorney General's office take over the case. And they did so in February 2018, after Sheriff Nathan Lewis put in a formal request. It would be over a year later, however, uh, before what was found was found. 
As we first reported earlier this evening, investigators from multiple different law enforcement agencies confirm his remains have been found. Private investigators confirmed the remains were Browns through dental records. His family was notified this afternoon. He was last seen getting gas in Canadian back in 2016. It was on the eve of Thanksgiving. On January 9th, 2019, human remains were discovered in an area near Lake Marvin Road. It was Tom, 14 miles away from where his car was found. Now it was found in an area that hadn't been searched yet. Interestingly, Klein Investigations said that, before the body was found, the police pushed them out of the area, due to what they said was an active investigation regarding drug activity. Now Klein Investigations said they never saw anything related to drug activity, which is food for thought that the police wanted to keep the private investigators out of the area where Tom's body would eventually be found. It's interesting. Something I'm sure everybody's wondering right now is kind of what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, what's next is uh, this is now a homicide investigation. It's a full-fledged homicide investigation. No, no matter how you look at it, it's a homicide investigation. Uh, what will happen now is that the OAG uh, and the uh, Texas Rangers will continue their investigation and continue to interview people and build evidence. Uh, I can't talk about the evidence out there, so please don't ask. I mean, I'm just telling you, don't. Uh, we, on our side, if we are re-engaged, uh, we, will, we will start a homicide investigation on this side. We're, the first thing that we do that we know they are doing is going back over all the old information. Now we go look for the, for the bad guy. So, who found Tom's remains? Well, the sheriff's office. But I heard you say they had handed the case off to the Texas Attorney General's office. They did. You see, Sheriff's Deputy Pine Gregory, who was also uh, the guy who took Tucker out on that spin the morning Tom disappeared, well, he stumbled across Tom's body while searching for deer antlers while on the job when he should have been doing Sheriff's Deputy shit. Also, apparently, deers didn't shed antlers in the area until March and April of that year due to a mild winter. Also, it was 2 a.m., one thing that's really bothering me is, um, and it seems like it's bothering you guys as well too, is he mentions that he was just out and about at 2 a.m. looking for deer antlers and deer scat and just happened to stumble across the body while he was hundreds of feet away from the road. Has, he, has, he men has that specific uh, sheriff's deputy mentioned why he was looking specifically for deer antlers or deer scat in the middle of the night? No, not to my knowledge. I don't uh think he's made any comment on it. How Tom Brown died, it's inconclusive. The Attorney General's office, they never released their findings, but the Sheriff's office, they were happy to say he had committed suicide. You know, the people not actually handling the case. And so we're at the big, this does not make any sense whatsoever part. So there was blood and a shell casing found in Tom's car. His body was found 14 miles away. I'm not sure if it's a regular occurrence in these cases when the scene of, you know, the supposed suicide was 14 miles away from where the body was found. That's interesting. Also, uh, Tom, you know, he was a big guy. He was a, he was a football player. Six foot, 195 pounds. It's unlikely one person would have been able to move him 14 miles away. There was also a suggestion, as Philip Klein of Klein Investigations puts it, from the office of the Attorney General, that the night Tom disappeared, he had been Googling on his phone in privacy mode for suicide hotlines. After contacting Apple, Philip Klein said that he was informed that privacy mode is exactly that. There's no way of knowing. You can't tell what someone has been searching for in privacy mode. Thank God. It seems like the office of the Attorney General and the local Sheriff's Department have really kind of stuck to their guns in trying to in trying to frame this as a suicide and it really just blows my mind that they are still making this argument um, just considering the the facts surrounding the case the only thing that i can find that would ever justify their argument that this this was a suicide was the fact that they uh, are claiming that shortly before his death he was looking up information on suicide hotlines 
Okay, so from my knowledge, it would just be solely the um, the quote lookup that right. was on his phone. You know, I, I don't know. I can't confirm that. I know 100% that our team completely, um, 120%, if not more, does not agree with it also seems there was never an autopsy performed on Thomas Brown's body. Less than a week after, Jeff Castleteen, father of Michael Castleteen, whose card was found in Tom's truck, committed suicide. This raised questions as the sheriff's office had released the cause of death before the medical examiner results. Deputy Pine Gregory, who found Tom's remains was fired four months after Tom was found. This was after the county attorney had said that they were no longer accepting cases handled by him due to his credibility issues. The attorney had already refused multiple cases that were submitted by Deputy Gregory, quote, for lack of sufficient probable cause and or misapplication of the law, unquote. He also had a criminal history it also came to light that Sheriff Nathan Lewis had a bit of an ill history of harassing youths, including Tom. So much so, in fact, that the former sheriff, James Pearson, publicly posted about it. In 2019, the sheriff was investigated by Texas Rangers, Yeehaw. No details about this investigation have been released, but it is a criminal one. On July 1st, 2019, Penny and the Moms for Tom team put up billboards around Canadian. These billboards were almost immediately vandalized. The phrase, there is a killer among us, had been cut out. In August 2019, the Texas Attorney General announced that it was suspending the investigation into the death of Tom Brown. They said all evidence had been analyzed and no ruling into Tom's cause of death could be made. The AG's office said investigators evaluated all evidence related to Thomas's death and concluded there is no viable evidence that indicates foul play. The Attorney General's office agreed to take on the case in February of 2018 after the Hemphill County Sheriff requested they take over. The Hemphill County Sheriff's Office, Texas Attorney General's Criminal Investigations Division, the Texas Rangers, and the FBI have all been working the case and were all part of the joint statement today. They evaluated evidence related to the manner of death, cause of death, and specific suspect. The AG's office said it has exhausted all resources available and spent thousands of hours dedicated to this case. The investigation is considered suspended pending any new discovered evidence that is credible at this time, Walt. The Attorney General's office say there is nothing more to look at. Klein Investigations, they disagree. They're not giving up and they released a statement. It seems pretty obvious to me and it seems pretty obvious to you guys that somebody did this to him. Um, mm -hmm. do you, have you ever been able to come up with any kind of theories or motive of what anyone would ever have of coming after Thomas? Um, I'd say we have, I, I would say that we have a couple different theories, nothing that I can, you know, el elaborate on it. Of course. Time. I would say that there are a couple different theories that, um, we are working with. Um, I think there's more to come, um, in the next few weeks and months. I think it's just, um. It's just going to be a process of how and when this will play out. In November, they released another statement that they were still investigating, and they do not think it was a suicide, as the sheriff's office said. They're fairly sure he was murdered. Klein Investigations would also release some of their own findings. Examining Tom's truck, a cadaver dog got a positive hit on it. An aluminol test confirmed the presence of blood in the vehicle. Uh, chance the cadaver dog and how the dog hit on the uh, automobile. Second, after that happened, we secured the car and we put it in a warehouse and bit by bit, we luminol the car. Uh, when that happened, we were shocked, we found, which was uh, an enormous amount of, um, uh, of glow inside the car. Specifically, what we wanted to show the public today was a portion of the automobile, which is the driver's compartment whereas we see drug, blood drippings 
that were going down the uh, A wall of the car, number one. Number two, where the uh, A post is and the A wall is uh, over towards the uh, side of the uh, automobile uh, near where they say they found the small smidgen of blood. They're calling it a small little bit of blood. And um, after they got that small smidgen of blood, they, they said that was a small amount of blood in the car. Uh, when we luminol it, we found out that there was a bigger smear or smidgen of blood, and then we began the luminol down towards the floor, and we found a pooling area of blood. Our theory has been, and has always been, that um, that that somebody must have come up behind Tom while he was sitting in the car and shot him in the head. We say that for a couple of reasons. Number one, again, because of the pooling in that area. Number two, because we found a 25 caliber shell casing in the car. And number three, there was a small splatter pattern uh, from what can be deduced as a, uh, uh, as a uh, gunshot wound uh, uh, and a spattering from a gunshot wound. You guys have mentioned that a um, that you have a, a reason to believe that Thomas Brown was executed while he was in his car, and that you have reason to believe that the bullet never left his skull. Was there ever an autopsy done on Thomas? Not to my knowledge. So you don't have a way to determine if there was uh, a bullet still inside his skull? No, I, I cannot. Okay. Uh, and... Get this, most recently, in November 2019, Sheriff Nathan Lewis resigned. Probably had something to do with the Texas Rangers' Yeehaw investigation. No charges have been brought against him, however, though the resignation says it all. It was revealed that, although unrelated to the Tom Brown case, he had threatened a juvenile probation officer. He is also being investigated for two offenses, including official oppression and tampering with a witness for an incident. What kind of motivation do you do you feel the Office of Attorney General or the local sheriff's department has for continuing the um, the their stance that Thomas Brown committed suicide? Like, what motivation would they have for continuing this? You know, I think with the sheriff now out of office and a new sheriff has taken um, place, I you know I don't know um, exactly what his plan is at this point in time. But what I do know is that I think he's looking at all avenues. I don't think that he is solely looking at the suicide theory. And that brings us up to date on the Tom Brown case. There are so many questions in this case, goddammit. So his bag, it was found in one place, his phone in another, and his body 14 miles away from where his car was found. His phone was last pinged near the football stadium. Did something happen there? And, you know, he could have been killed, and then whoever did it got in his car, abandoned it, and then two other people dumped his body somewhere else. And then in the weeks and months after that, they started dumping every other bit of shit that was in his car. So, spoiler alert, what part of this makes sense? None of it. The official investigation, it's been suspended. Klein investigations are continuing to look into it. And the search for what happened to Tom Brown continues. So what would you say is the, the number one message that you would like the public to know about um, that could possibly help you uh, bring this case to a resolution? Anything that you can share at all? Um, I would just say that I think that there are uh, a couple people that still have information that for whatever reason just do not feel comfortable or safe coming forward with that information. Um, and we just want to reiterate that at Klein Investigations, we do keep everyone anonymous. and. Um, we will continue to do so. So I just think it's important that the people with that information to please come forward. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I gotta give a special thanks to Night Docs for helping me with the research on this video and for doing that really good interview there with an investigator from Klein Investigations. Link to his channel down below, so please check it out. And I will see you as always, real soon in the next video. Thanks again, take care of yourselves. And this is Night Ducks, signing off. Mike, yeah.